Welcome to this Holy Week Reflection on Good Friday. The passage for today is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Nazareth, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. I like Peter. I think of all the disciples, he's probably my favourite. He seems to me to be the most real, the most human. He gets it wrong. He puts his foot in it. He spurts something out before he's really thought it through. But his heart was there. He loved Jesus. He wanted to follow. He wanted to be better disciple. He had the hope that he could be the best disciple. When all others fell away, he would stand firm. But the pressures of the day got to him. He was afraid. Jesus, his leader, his master, his role model, had been arrested and they didn't know why. He was upset. He'd lost his friend and mentor. He was confused. How could this have happened? This was Jesus who was going to save the world. Had they got it wrong? Had Jesus got it wrong? He was lost, like a sheep without a shepherd. How could Jesus have abandoned them? He'd given up his whole life to follow Jesus. Peter didn't think and he blurted out, I don't know the man. I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't say it to hurt Jesus. He was confused and afraid. But his words hung in the air that day. And then the cock crowed. And Peter realised what he had done. He remembered that Jesus had said that this would happen. And he realised that he had let Jesus down. I wonder what was bothering Peter most at that moment. The fact that he had let Jesus down or the fact that Jesus knew him so well, that Jesus knew how he was going to react. And Jesus was right. Despite all the bravado, all the promises, Jesus knew Peter better than Peter knew himself. How can you deny knowing someone who knows you so well that they know how you will react in every situation? They know what you're about to say before you even say it. And yet they still love you. They still choose you to be one of their disciples. Jesus knows that we get it wrong, that we make mistakes. He knows how we will react when faced with trials and temptations and fear and confusion and anger. And yet he loves us and calls us to be his disciples. Today, with the world as it is, and listening to all the news reports, it is easy to concentrate on the pain and suffering of Good Friday and how Jesus shares in that suffering and suffers alongside us. But Good Friday is not just about the pain and suffering. It's about love, God's love for us, that love which held him to the cross, the love so strong that Jesus endured that pain for us. 
God knows our weaknesses. He knows how we will react when we're scared, when we're confused, when we're lost. And on our own, we will succumb to those weaknesses. But through him, we can be strong and stand firm. We don't have to deny Jesus. We don't have to turn our backs on him. Through him and his cross, we have the strength to stand up and be counted, to do the right thing, to let that love of Christ shine through us. The cross teaches us that good triumphs over evil as long as we stand firm. So where today, in our lives and in our dealings with others, do we need to stand firm? To not give in to the weaknesses of human nature, but to stand firm in his love. Where can we show others that pain and suffering don't have the last word, but love is stronger? Where can we celebrate the victory of the cross in our lives today? May we think about our words the words that we choose today and how they will impact others. And may we choose them carefully. May we think about our loyalty today, our loyalty to God and to others and the effect that it will have. And may we remember the loyalty of the one who hung on that cross. He hung there for Peter and all of Peter's mistakes and he hung there for you and for me and all of our mistakes. Jesus, who knows us better than we know ourselves. And may we stand firm in his strength. So let us pray. Lord, on this Good Friday, we thank you for your cross for the pain and the suffering which you bore and for standing firm in love for us. May we stand firm in love for you this day. May we not deny you or turn away from you, but may we embrace all that it means to follow you, to follow the one who loves us so much that you died for us. May we always strive to live in that love and to share it with others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.